Hey guys, Ms. Corcoran here, and today we are looking at Adobe Illustrator. This is the workspace that you will look at when you open Illustrator. So I'm going to go X out of it and get back into it so you know where to find it. It should be on your dock. If you do not have it on your dock, you want to go to Launchpad over here. Click on that, and that will show you all of the applications that are in your computer. Um, I have a lot. Uh, what you're looking for is Illustrator. So you're going to grab that and drag it down to the dock so it lives on there. So I already have that on the dock so I don't need to do it again. But if you do not have it, make sure that you click and drag it down to the dock. Okay, once you do that, you are going to click on Illustrator and you can see all of your past projects will pop up here if you are logged into the Creative Cloud. If you have not logged into the Creative Cloud, you need to do that. You should see it up here. It's a C and another C, and they're sort of interwoven. Uh, now, it says updates available. You should go ahead and do your updates uh, whenever you have time. Don't do it um, if it's going to take away from project time that you need. But if you have uh, about five minutes, click on your update and then um, it will update the program so it will function the most efficiently. Okay, if you click on that right there, you'll see that you're logged in or you're not. If you are not logged in, go ahead and um, log in. And once you're into the Creative Cloud, all of your projects on any Adobe software that you make will automatically save. Okay, so we're gonna click on New File up here top left. Now there's a bunch of templates that you can use. This is not applicable to our project now, but just so you know, there's a lot of really good graphic design templates that you can tweak and use as your own if you need something uh, quickly and you're in a time crunch. Okay, we're gonna go over to preset details on the right, um, and you can just call this logo. And make sure that your units of measure are set to inches here. Um, I would say most graphic designers will use picas um, for uh, a vector image instead of a raster image. Vector is like line based, like that. We will go into that information in another module. Okay, five by five, that's what you want here. Okay, really, you're just looking for a square. And then since this is for your Gmail signature. There will be other applications, of course, that you use your logo on a business card, poster, flyer, on your website. Um, but for something that's web-based, what you want to do is uh, choose RGB color and then make sure it's screen set to uh, 72 uh, pixels per inch. Or sometimes it says DPI, that's dots per inch. Okay, and then we're going to say create. So there you go. Okay, <clears throat> up here, your workspace it might look a little different depending on, I, I don't know, sometimes the workspaces just look different than this. So you wanna go to um, window, workspace, and then I usually use printing and proofing. <clears throat> you can do essentials. That's gonna give you a lot less. See, it's very simplified. Back to printing and proofing, there you go. Okay, this is your panel called Artboard. So you can see all of these little tiny icons. You will learn to associate each tiny icon with a different function and you'll recognize it. Okay, this one is Artboards. Click on that, you just keep hitting the plus button and you can make as many pages as you want. So you can see all of your pages here and if you don't want them all in a row you can organize them differently and say okay I want uh, two columns going this way three rows whatever so that looks a little better okay double click on your top one and it will go to your first artboard now do you need this many artboards no but in design one of the realities of graphic design is that you make what's called iterations or variations which means different versions uh, getting sometimes incrementally better on um, all of these different artboards. So it's like one idea 
and you'll have that idea shown five to ten different ways and you just choose between you know which ones you like the best sometimes you most of the time you do iterations based on feedback so you do one or two and then you get feedback and you improve it and you refine it and re revise it and you make those revisions on these different artboards okay over here <clears throat> This is your tool panel. These are the main tools that you use in Illustrator. Uh, I'm going to use this uh, shape tool. And if you hold that down, you'll see this drop down menu. And I'm going to go to ellipse. And if you hit shift, it will constrain your proportions so that you make a perfect circle. And if you hit alt shift, it will grow out from the middle. Okay, now that's important to know because sometimes you want it to be uh, what's called an offset path, which means it's like a circle that's perfectly around the other circle. Okay, you can see these alignment um, notes will pop up, and I know that I, the center circle is in the center of the other circle. There's other ways to do that too. Okay, so I'm going to start with that. So again, I'm making my logo. <clears throat> Do I know what it's gonna look like? Well, not n really, because I've made you know different logos for myself over the years. Um, but the difference is for you guys, you should already have your logo sketched out and your idea done. And what you're doing is basically digitizing an already established idea, sketching and developing an idea in Illustrator is not a best practice for graphic designers. What you want to do is sketch it on paper, um, and then you want to take that and use that as a reference when you're digitizing. Some people will upload their picture onto Illustrator and trace it um, using like a layers method. So you would put your picture in here, and then you would add a layer, and on top of the picture, Maybe you like bring your opacity down. <clears throat> and then on top of that, you can see the circle's getting smaller. Or I'm sorry, less opaque. And then on top of that picture, you would basically trace it up here. Okay. So back to this. Uh, I think what I'm going to do here is just make like a flower shape. Just to give you a sense. I really love nature. Um, and I also, a lot of my photography and design work um, draws inspiration from the natural world. So I'm just going to make sort of like a flower or a plant. Okay, so I just moved ahead, sorry. This is a selection tool. You can just click and drag things. This is the direct selection. That allows you to edit anchor points, each individual anchor point. Okay, so now I'm gonna hold my option down and then I'm going to click and drag my handle. And I'm going to click and drag this other handle because I'm trying to make like a flower petal type shape. All right now remember with logos, you want it to be very graphic and very simple. Don't make it overly complicated. So I'm gonna to try to bring this out a little more and bring this down a little more. Okay, pretty good, maybe out. Okay, now I'm gonna go over here to my color. So this is, the big box is called the fill and the small outline box is called the stroke. So if I click on that, you can go to your properties. There's so many ways to get to it. I'm gonna click on my fill and these are basic colors here. Now, if you want way more choices you can double click on this box and it will give you you know millions and millions of choices um okay so i'm going to use this green color i don't know maybe i'm going to use a blue instead just getting into the black hole of colors okay so there you go and then i am not going to have a stroke Okay, now, how is this going to turn into a flower, you ask? Corcoran, this doesn't look like a flower. That's true. Okay, 
if you hold your space bar down, which is something I do all the time, I do it almost like out of muscle memory and sometimes I forget to tell you that I'm doing it. Hold your space bar down, your cursor will turn into a hand. Once it's a hand, you can grab and drag. I do that all the time. It's like moving your paper around. Okay, I'm gonna go to object, repeat, radial. Oh, that is awesome. Oh my gosh. And you can do so many flower petals. And then you can decide to make it stop here. You can rotate it around. Okay. That's pretty good. Oh my gosh. Command zero. Command zero is fit to screen. Okay, now, good, great, wonderful. Now I'm gonna go to, back to my properties. The properties panel is something you always wanna have open because it is like a prediction, Illustrator's prediction of what you wanna do. See these quick actions? It's basically saying, oh, well, what do you wanna do? I think if you have this tool going, you might wanna do these things, or you can just change the basic visual characteristics here. So have your properties panel open at all times. Okay, then we are going to go to Object, Expand. Okay. And now you are out of the repeat function. And I'm going to shift and resize it to over here. And then I'm going to... Now, part of my logo is my name. Now, you may not have your name in your logo. It's totally up to you right? Because one of them, if you have a word in your logo, it's called a word mark. And if you just have um, a logo, it's just a mark. So I'm going to say Carolyn Corcoran. And then of course, that is the most hideous font. Please do not use Myriad Pro. You have so many choices. And if you don't like all of your choices here, now my type kit is way bigger than yours because I've downloaded so many things over the years. Um, that's just there. Uh, I'm gonna go with that one, I guess. Okay. And I'm going to make it, what color? Black is fine, okay. Okay, and now I'm going to put a stroke on there. Just make it a little heavier. And I'm going to do something called Create Outlines, which turns your type into a shape. So you're not going to be able to edit it anymore, but you will be able to do that. It's easier to work with. Okay. So I like that. I think it's good. It's a little hard to read here. Um, and that is, I don't know, I might change that later. Okay, we're going to ungroup. And now see, you can just have like one letter really big. Now, if I don't hold shift down, it does not constrain the proportions and it looks very stretchy. So you have to hold shift down when you are resizing things in Illustrator. If you're in Photoshop, you don't need to do that. It will constrain your proportions automatically. Okay, now I'm trying to drag a box around just my name, right? But it's uh, grabbing the flower too. So what I'm going to do is click on the flower and hit command two, which is lock. Um, there's other, lots of other ways to do that, but I just was trained to use key commands. So that's what I do. And I'm just going to move this down. Uh, yeah. That's kind of it. Now, this is one iteration. Okay. I just unlocked everything. I'm going to group this, Command G, or in your properties panel, it will say ungroup, group, save as symbol. That, that's more complicated things. Don't worry about that right now. Okay. So now it's grouped. If I click on one part of it, everything will select. And I'm going to align it to my artboard. Okay. Right here and right here. Ding. So it's right in the center. And then I'm looking at it from farther away. And that looks okay. Okay, now I'm going to duplicate it. How do I do that? You hit Option or Alt, 
and then you click and drag. And I'm going to move this over here, and now I'm going to ungroup because I'm going to try to change again the iterations. Ah. So this one, I'm going to make it different in the position. Okay, so logos really can look and present many different ways depending on just small adjustments that you make, right? So like this looks completely different. And also you notice that my name is not aligned properly. Thank you, Illustrator, you're so helpful. So there's another one. And now you can view them together and be like, hmm, which one do I like better? I also feel like maybe it's missing something in here, maybe like a little circle. This is way longer than my usual videos, just so you know, guys. It's just because we are learning so many things at one time. Okay, again, option shift. Why am I growing out from the middle? Because I'm trying to put something in the center. That looks pretty good. I don't really know if I like the black, though. It like takes away from my name. Why are you snapping? Okay. Do you guys feel like you're watching a YouTuber right now? I hope not. My son watches YouTubers. Like he watches people play video games. And it just like sounds a little boring to me. Like, yeah, but wouldn't you rather just play the game yourself? He's like, I'm learning things. I'm like, okay. Okay, usually my computer's acting weird. Usually it doesn't snap like that. It's very, very smooth. Yeah, I like that. It's okay. I feel like it's a little far away right here. Uh, yeah. Good. Okay. What do you guys think? You like it? That's kind of it. So that is how I make a logo. Now you might be in the black hole. Like I could do this for another three hours for sure. Just changing the color, changing the size, changing the typeface. There's so many different tweaks that make designs present so differently. And that is part of why I absolutely love graphic design because you can get your ideas brought to life very, very quickly and then you can make decisions about the quality of your ideas also very quickly. So it's much more efficient than drawing. However, not a replacement for drawing because there's something magical that happens when you're drawing in your brain that it just allows the ideas to be very, very fluid. Um, whereas design, it's more like, okay, I already have an idea established and now I'm just tweaking it uh, to so it presents a little bit differently. Um, yeah, this is more of like a final stages type of process instead of just an ideation. Okay, you guys hopefully understood everything that I just explained to you. You may probably, likely, very probably have to watch this video or parts of this video many times to get it. Please let me know if you need help with the tools. Um, and that is it.